I'm Priya Basil, and I support Women for Women International's Join Me on the Bridge campaign. I see International Women's Day as an opportunity to reflect on my own position as a woman within a wider context. I live in the West, in a society that seeks to uphold women's rights, and mine have for the most part been protected. But even in developed countries, discrimination and violence against women remains prevalent, unfortunately. My mum does voluntary work for victim support, and through her I know that domestic violence accounts uh, for 25% of all reported incidents of, of violence, uh, and is in fact the second most reported crime. The majority of the victims are women, and even in a wealthy and enlightened society like that in the UK, there are insufficient resources and legal provisions to help these women adequately. But at least there is some infra infrastructure. In other countries, women in even worse situations have no recourse to help which is why the work of organizations like Women for Women International is so critical. And even when conditions are generally conducive to enabling us to be strong, independent, and self-confident individuals, we don't always achieve that ideal. I know that I don't. But the struggle to do so is for every one of us the struggle of a lifetime. And what is life, if not a gradual evolution towards realizing a better self? and thereby contributing to the creation of a better society. I explore this concept through the main character in my novel, The Obscure Logic of the Heart. Lena is a young Muslim woman, and she falls in love with Anil, who's a Sikh. Um, her family opposes this union, and she's left to decide to choose between him and them. But this is a common enough um, situation. The thing that really complicates Lena's dilemma is the fact that she, um, she trains as a lawyer and she works in South Sudan for the UN. And through her work there, she discovers that uh, Anil's family may be involved in uh, contributing to the very violence that she herself is seeking to, to curb uh, because she's seen the effects of war in Sudan and particularly the way that women there have suffered. So um, I'd like to read you a passage from the book, actually, where Lena is really thinking about um, negotiating the different demands on her and wondering whether she can do this and still remain independent and courageous and, above all, remain true to herself. So the passage that um, you'll hear now takes place um, in Sudan. Uh, Lena's been working at a refugee camp. And there's just been an attack by the Janjaweed on the camp. And she was there when it happened, and she's just escaped. And hours later, she gets a call uh, telling her that Anil, her lover, has been in a terrible accident. And we see her as she starts to go towards him. As the plane rose above the clouds, Lena was sure that luck, happiness, love, all the things that mattered, could not be measured in relation to anyone else's experience. The private sphere is bigger than the public. It always has been. That is why lovers can rejoice during a war, why a birth is celebrated during famine, why siblings play heedlessly in fields where their ancestors were maimed. Even those on opposite sides of a public divide can end up defying convention or risking death out of their own personal conviction. The past is dotted with acts of humanity, instance of individual benevolence between seeming enemies, Tutsi and Hutu, Muslim and Hindu. Lena held this thought with a kind of shame, knowing what she did, that the public can eclipse, degrade, and destroy the private. This had been proved countless times while she was working in Sudan. The women she had met, who had fled from their homes and arrived with nothing except the growing seed of the men who had raped them, the fathers who had seen their daughters violated, the wives whose husbands had been murdered in front of them, hacked by machetes as if they were blades of grass, the children forced to collaborate in the slaughter of their own parents. These were histories crueler than anything she would ever experience. They haunted her, turned her sick with sadness at the monstrosity of mankind, they were the causes to which she had dedicated her life, and yet they seemed to fade in the face of her own personal crisis. She wondered how many kinds of truth there were, how many layers of reality, and how was anyone supposed to decide which one mattered most? 
She tried to push away the feeling, even as it claimed her. She was full of fear about Anil. What had happened to him? What would the future bring? And how would she tell him what she needed to? These worries tore at her worse than any atrocity. Cringing, wanting to tear apart the words as they formed, she thought, the world, finally, is what lies closest to your heart. I think in extreme personal situations, most of us probably would end up privileging the private, the way Lena does at that moment, though later she acts differently again. And then there are women like Zainab Salbi, the founder of Women for Women International, who seem unwaveringly to make great personal sacrifices for the greater good. And I feel a strong desire to reach out and touch the lives of other people, those I know and complete strangers. This is why I write. I believe that words are actions, and I believe in the power of literature and of stories to uplift, to enlighten, um, and also temporary, temporarily to free us from the binds of our own experience. Even when language only gives form to pain, um, it has a value because it gives us a testimony, a record, and a reason to act. I love the idea of this virtual bridge that we're on now because it marries the great possibilities of literature with the very practical activities of Women for Women International. Here, imagination and reality combine to unite us as we share this virtual space, think about our lot, and hopefully act to alter something, however small, in our own lives and maybe even in the life of someone else. The world is not, as Lena thinks, what lies closest to your heart. The world is what you choose. And of course, we must choose with our hearts, but also with our heads to achieve our best as human beings. I am on this virtual bridge to show my solidarity with women who are suffering and also women who are succeeding in the world today. Thank you for joining me, for joining us. It is through collective gestures such as these that the meaning of International Women's Day is magnified and made more resonant.